I don't know what it was, but uncontrollable farting. Hey guys, my name is Lauren and if you are new to my channel, I am a new mom. I just gave birth three months ago to a little girl and man, can I tell you that it has been a crazy journey. <laughs> I tried to make this video. I've been trying to make it since 11 a.m. and it's now almost 5 p.m. So <laughs> she has just been a handful today, but you know, that's mom life for you. So my name is Lauren and I kind of wanted to go over my labor and delivery story today because when I was pregnant, that is all I watched like towards the end. I was so nervous and anxious, I just wanted to watch as many birthing vlogs and birth stories as I could because it just made me feel better. But what I noticed is that I didn't see many stories about women doing nitrous oxide for their labor, so I thought that I would share my experience with nitrous oxide for my labor and my birth. So if you want the background story on my whole pregnancy and like leading up to my labor and my birth, I did make a video right before I gave birth, just kind of going over my whole pregnancy journey. And I talk about how I was considered high risk because of a hormone level that they tested in the beginning of my pregnancy and it was abnormal. So I was not really high risk, but they just kind of watched over me a little more closely, I guess. Um, the couple days before they induced me, I went in for one of my last checkups and they measured my AFI, which is your amniotic fluid index. And it started getting a little low. I think it was at 8% that day and they say they like it to be 10, but they're not really concerned unless it gets to five. So I was like in that in between and he told me to come in a couple days later and they were going to remeasure it. So when I went back in, I measured 7%. So I was consistently losing fluid. Now, a lot of things can impact your fluid levels, like how much you drink that day. And just as you progress in your pregnancy, your fluid just naturally decreases. So I don't really know if that was an emergency, but it was kind of like an excuse, I guess, to induce me because for the abnormal hormone level that they tested in the beginning of my pregnancy, he said that it puts me at high risk for stillbirth. So he said that paired with uh, my fluid levels decreasing, he said he didn't want to risk it and didn't want me to go past my due date. So we went in May 3rd to get induced. He told me to be there at 5 a.m. So we went to the hospital at 5 and they checked us in and at that point it was still night shift. So the night shift nurse started my IV and started fluids on me and we kind of just um, started to relax and just wait for the doctor to get in. So I thought that they were going to start, you know, giving me Pitocin or start the induction when we got in. But they waited for the doctor to check me and he didn't get in till 8. So we sat there for three hours, like just waiting for this doctor to get in. And I was so anxious and so was Brendan, I'm sure, my husband. And, you know, that kind of sucked, but I mean, it is what it is. When the doctor came in, he checked me and I was 1.5 centimeters dilated and 50% effaced, which is what I was a few days prior to that at my last checkup. And so, yeah, so I hadn't progressed any. And so they started the low dose Pitocin um, through my IV and then they inserted a Foley balloon catheter type thing. And what they do is they stick it up and they push it against your cervix and they inflate it with, um, I think it's like five cc's of water or something like that. And they wait for it to fall out because it's supposed to help your cervix dilate. So then it just falls out naturally once your cervix gets to three to four centimeters. So I was like, okay, I wasn't, you know, I thought it was going to take maybe an hour or so. It was 4 p.m. when the Foley balloon actually came out. So 
I tried to walk around before that and the nurse wouldn't really he would let me but he was concerned because the fetal heart rate monitor kept coming off my stomach so we couldn't see her heartbeat which I mean she was fine I was kind of annoyed because he kept stopping me every time I tried to walk to fix it but I mean that's his job and I know that he was just doing what he has to do I understand I'm a nurse so we can never be too safe um so yeah so oh yeah I did want to mention before I continue that my day shift nurse was actually a male and at first this kind of like made me a little skeptical but we actually really ended up liking him a lot so you know I've never seen you know a male nurse in a labor and delivery setting but he was awesome awesome so I tried walking around throughout the day you know super uncomfortable having that thing up there against my cervix and so it ended up not falling out until 4 p.m. So once that fell out, they upped the Pitocin and then they broke my water. And this was the most, it didn't hurt. And I had heard that it might hurt you, but I, that is not like the pain. I don't remember any pain from that because everything that happened after that was so much worse than whatever that could have been. But they do stick this like hook thing you know up there and there is a lot of I do remember a lot of pressure and then all of a sudden it's just like you just feel warmth and it's really gross and it just doesn't stop coming out of you until you give birth pretty much it just like keeps leaking and this is gonna get TMI by the way so if you're squeamish or you don't want to listen to this then <laughs> don't because this is definitely gonna be a little graphic for you <laughs> but that's that is how birth is it's graphic so so after they broke my water i got a really weird side effect <laughs> of that i guess i don't even i think it was the pitocin i don't really know what it was but i started getting extremely gassy and you know <laughs> i pride myself on my husband never hearing me fart and I've known him for years and years. I think we've been together for like six years now and he's never heard me fart until I was in labor. Let me tell you, I don't know what it was, but uncontrollable farting the entire time after they broke my water. I don't know, I don't know what it was. So at that point, my contractions started getting a lot stronger after they broke my water. And so I asked the nurse for him to bring me the nitrous oxide gas. And so if any of you have ever had laughing gas, like at the dentist, they put a mask around your, an oxygen mask around your face and then they, um, it continuously lets out nitrous oxide and you um, just like breathe it in. You put it up to your face and you breathe it in as long as you want and then you just like keep it on your face and then you exhale with the mask still on your face. So at four o'clock I was still, I was four centimeters and 70% effaced and I had just started the nitrous oxide. So it had already been almost 12 hours at this point, so about 11 hours that I had been at the hospital and I was only four centimeters. So I was like, great, this is going to be a really long process, but you know, first time mom and inductions, like, I mean, I kind of mentally prepared for that. The nitrous oxide, if you watch my labor and delivery vlog, it definitely, <laughs> you can definitely feel it. And so what the nurse told me to do was right when you start feeling a contraction coming on, and I would usually just look at the, um, the heart rate monitor or like the screen that they have in the labor and delivery room, and you can see when your contraction starts building because you can't really always feel it when it just starts coming on. So I would constantly be looking at that and right when I saw the line start to go up, I would quickly inhale and then exhale into the mask. And so if you look at my labor and delivery vlog, it's quite comical because I was definitely feeling it and definitely had the giggles, especially at first. And I don't know, I had a great time with it, honestly. In the beginning, I ate like three slushies while I was on nitrous oxide. Like I was just like, one hand just like breathing in gas and like the other hand just like had a slushy in it the entire time <laughs> i had the nitrous oxide i don't know i had a great time while it lasted but 
So after a while, I, I want to say, I know I was, um, I want to say this was, I don't remember the time, but it was a few hours later. I had been using the nitrous oxide for a really long time and I noticed it started to wear off, well not wear off, but it just wasn't working as well as it did in the beginning. And the nurse did say that once you get to a certain point, it just kind of plateaus and you just really stop feeling it, especially if your contractions are really strong. And so I don't have anything to compare it to, but from what I hear, when you get induced with Pitocin, it makes your contractions a lot stronger and um, more painful. So at this point, my contractions were so painful. Like, um, the only way that I can really describe the pain is like really bad um, cramps, like gas cramps. Like you really have to go to the bathroom, like that kind of cramping. That's what it felt like times 100. <laughs> I mean, anytime I would inhale the oxygen, or not the oxygen, I, I, the um, nitrous oxide, I just couldn't even feel it. I mean, it wasn't doing anything. Like, I didn't get any buzz from it at this point anymore. It was just, it was just not working for me. And I tried to get on the yoga ball and kind of just roll around on the ball. And my husband was rubbing my back. We got, we brought a little back massager thing that we, um, we got from our birthing class. And so we used that and he was rubbing my back and he was really sweet and I could tell that he just like <laughs> didn't really know what to do like he felt so bad for me but there really wasn't anything anyone could do except at this point get me the epidural and I had gone into my labor really wanting to try an all natural labor and delivery with just using the nitrous oxide because it was the safest method I really didn't want any drugs um, but I was open to an epidural. I wasn't completely closed off to it because I've never been in labor and given birth before. So I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really know how my pain tolerance was. So I went in with an open mind. And so this was probably like 6 p.m., 6 or 7 p.m. at this point. And I was just miserable and nothing was working the ball wasn't working, the nitrous oxide wasn't working, so I asked the nurse if he could check me. And so he said he preferred the doctor to check me, but the doctor was in a C-section. So I said, look, I really am in pain, but if I'm far along enough, like around eight or nine centimeters, then I'll just wait it out and like suffer through with the contractions. But if I'm below that, then I really want an epidural. So he ended up checking me and I was only six centimeters at this point. And I was so exhausted. I hadn't eaten anything all day. And I don't know, I was just in a lot of pain. So I was like, okay, I'm not waiting. He, t The nurse told me that it takes about an hour to an hour and a half per centimeter to dilate when you're a first time mom. And so I was like, oh, Heck no. I was like, I am not waiting several more hours to give birth without any more pain medication. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So I told him I wanted the epidural. And at this point, I told him, I was like, listen, I want the epidural. But I don't know if I could sit through getting the epidural because I'm in so much pain every time I have a contraction. Like, I have to constantly move. It was like the weirdest feeling. Like I could not just sit there and be still. And you have to be really still when you get an epidural. So he was like, look, I know you don't want to do this, but why don't you consider getting IV fentanyl before you get your epidural? And that will kind of just relax you and help you sit still. So at this point, I was like, all right, just give it to me. And like, that is one thing that I really didn't want. Um, before I had gone into labor, like, I really didn't want any IV medications, like fentanyl, like IV narcotics, because I knew that that could affect the baby in some way. But at this point, I was in so much pain that I was like, just, just give it to me. Just, I need whatever drug you have. Like, I need it now. I was in so much pain. 
So I ended up getting IV fentanyl and at that point it made me so sick. Like I was just sitting there on the edge of the bed. Brendan was sitting in front of me and kind of just like holding my hands and the anesthesiologist was behind me and like honestly a lot of people say that getting an epidural hurts but for me, um, it, I mean the fentanyl probably helped a lot but um, it was nothing compared to how the rest of my labor was. I mean, that little pinch that you feel when they stick in the lidocaine to numb you, like, hurts a little bit. But other than that, like, it's a breeze. Like, honestly, getting epidural is not a big deal. But um, the fentanyl made me so sick. Like, I just felt so nauseous and dizzy after that. Like, I was going to pass out. I was just... My body was just felt like it was crumbling. Like, it, it was awful at this point. So after you gave me the epidural, they lay you very flat for I think about 20 to 30 minutes because they tried to get it, um, they tried to get the epidural medication to get to where it's supposed to. So they lay you very flat and I just remember being so uncomfortable during that time. But um, at my hospital, the epidural has a PCA pump, so anytime that I felt like the normal continuous rate of the medication going through the epidural wasn't strong enough. I could always push my button. I think it was every 15 minutes I could do that. So for two hours, the epidural worked wonders for me. I got a little nap in. I think I slept for maybe like 30 minutes to an hour. And this is, at this point, it's like 12 a.m. And um, around 12.30 or 1, the epidural started wearing off on my left side. And so I could feel the contractions just on my left side. And it was excruciating, <laughs> excruciating pain. At first it was just kind of uncomfortable, but eventually it just started hurting so badly. And then it eventually went to my right side. And I called the nurse in. At this point it was the night shift nurse and another anesthesiologist to come in and give me an extra dose of the epidural medicine and um he said give it 30 minutes to work and if it doesn't work then call us again i gave it 30 minutes and i literally was in so much pain i this is like the only time throughout the whole process that i started to cry i was just i was in so much pain like it was awful. I couldn't stop tossing and turn. Like, I just... And then the epidural stopped working, but I could still not really move my legs. So it was really just, like, miserable. I was in pain, but I couldn't move to relieve the pain. So that was just awful. And so I called the nurse and I said, please get the anesthesiologist to come back because whatever he gave me did not touch any... It did not touch my pain at all. So then the original doctor who had put in my epidural came into the room and he said that the anesthesiologist to give me the little, the little booster medication um, kind of is lenient with how much he gives. So he said he was going to hook me up and so he did. <laughs> so whatever he gave me, whatever dose he gave me was perfect and it ended up working. It didn't really take away the pain completely, but it worked a lot better than what it was. So at this point, I think it was around 2, and they checked me again, and they said that I was basically ready to go, that I was fully dilated and fully effaced, and they could feel her head. So they started um, getting everything ready, and... The doctor stayed in the room with me while I pushed about two times just to see, I guess, how well I would be at pushing and he wanted to see if he could step out or not because and if it looked like I was going to struggle a little bit, he was going to step out for a little while. And at this point, my doctor was on a 24-hour shift. So I had been there for, at this point, I think like 17 or 18 hours. And I was just so exhausted. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I felt like I wasn't going to be able to push because I was so tired and I hadn't eaten anything. And I barely got gotten any sleep. So, 
the first couple times I pushed, they said I did well, but the doctor felt like she wasn't going to come like right that second. So he stepped out and it was just um, the nurse in there while I was pushing. Like the nurse, she kept like yelling at me to push harder and harder and like for some reason while I was pushing, I was getting extremely nauseous. Like I felt like I was going to vomit after pushing for five seconds so I couldn't make it to the whole 10 seconds pushing and she would kind of like get annoyed like not annoyed with me but she'd be like no Lauren like don't stop you can do it you can do it and I'm like I'm literally gonna throw up if I continue to push like I need a break just chill or I'm gonna throw up everywhere first, I guess for the first like 20 minutes I was really nauseous every time I pushed so I asked if I could use oxygen like a little non rebreather mask I had heard that sometimes that helps with women. It gives them like an extra oomph, <laughs> an extra oomph, <laughs> like an extra kind of, I don't know. I just heard that it helps when pushing. So I asked if I could get oxygen. And so that helped with my nausea a lot. So while I was um, on breaks in between contractions, I would just breathe in with the oxygen mask and that really helped me. So just, some advice for you future mamas giving birth out there. Try an oxygen mask. I'm pushing for 20 to 30 minutes and the nurse asked if I wanted a mirror to see what was going on down there. And at first I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like I didn't care at that point. I was so tired. She brought in this huge mirror. Like I was expecting like a little like handheld mirror, but it was like a full on like huge rectangle mirror and she placed it right in front of me and during um, one of my contractions when I was pushing I watched it and I saw some of her hair start to come out and I was like no 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 <laughs> you need to take that away right now because I do not want to see that I do not want to see what's happening to my body down there like no please take it away so she ended up taking that away and then I pushed for about 25 more minutes and then at that point I was getting really really close like her head was like halfway out this is like when it starts getting a little weird um, she told me that when the baby's head starts crowning that I was gonna have to stop pushing and she said it would hurt a lot but I would have to stop pushing at that point because she would have to call the delivery team and the doctor so at this point the baby is like I'm in between pushing and she tells me to stop she goes okay Lauren stop pushing stop pushing just breathe breathe and then she calls the delivery team this is the only time I cursed during the entire experience I was in so much pain like all I wanted to do was push her the rest of her out of me and she was just stuck there like with her head halfway out and it was just I'm pretty sure that was like the worst part of the whole experience I'm like cringing just like reliving this experience right now telling the story because it was awful <laughs> um, but after the delivery team quickly came and the next push she was out and at, I had asked for skin to skin and they laid her on top of me and I also um, asked for delayed cord clamping so they waited a little bit to cut the cord I think I don't even remember everything after this was kind of just a blur because I was just dead at this point but when she first came out she wasn't crying and she was very blue so they were trying to get her to cry and she was just laying on top of me I mean she was moving but she just wasn't crying so I don't know why they said it was probably because she still had a lot of fluid in her lungs and so she just couldn't really get it out but I honestly think it probably had something to do with the epidural and the fentanyl maybe I don't know like the reason but so we didn't really get to do skin to skin at first they kind of after Brendan cut her cord they kind of swept her away from me and took her over to the um, delivery table under the heat lamp and I just tried to like stimulate her and get her to cry and so at this point um Brendan said like when we talked about it afterwards he said at this point he was kind of concerned because she wasn't crying 
but I just like felt like I was in a daze and I didn't really realize what was going on so I kind of just I just lay there and I just like wasn't really thinking anything um except the fact that the doctor was digging like legit digging his fingers into my stomach because he was trying to get the placenta out and I ended up having an extra lobe on my placenta so maybe that's why it kind of took a little while for the placenta to come out but it felt like forever before the placenta actually was delivered and and this is another gross point so um so he was digging into my stomach and all of a sudden blood just gushed out everywhere like all over him almost on his regular clothes and his face it was like this close to getting all over his face and I was just kind of like like we were all like silent in the room like it was so weird and he said that he had never seen that before <laughs> he was like that's a first I don't know why he was pushing so hard on my stomach though like I was like well what do you expect like I don't know I thought I was a hemorrhaging at that point, but apparently after I gave birth placenta, it was fine. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess he was just pushing so hard that literally it just like gushed, like shot out of me. It was pretty gross, but <laughs> I felt kind of bad. I was like, I'm so sorry. He was like, he, I could tell he was like grossed out, but I mean, what are you going to do? Um, the baby started crying. I don't know when. I think it was just a few minutes. But once I heard her cry, like, my heart just started melting. And she was perfect. And they measured her. And it was really funny because the doctor, like, as he handed the baby to the nurses, um, he had guessed that she was 7 pounds, 4 ounces. And that's exactly what she was. So that's when you know doctors have been doing this for a long time is when they can guess your baby's weight. So that was kind of cool. So after she started crying and they did her measurements and cleaned her up a little bit, they gave her to me and she latched on right away. It didn't stay like that for very long, but um, she did latch right away. And yeah, so that was basically it. Um, it was definitely an experience and a few weeks after I had given birth to her, I said, there's no way I'm doing that again. <laughs> and I don't know, I think being induced really makes your experience different. I mean, I wouldn't know because I've, you know, that was my first time giving birth, but from what I hear and what I've witnessed, I feel like inductions are always a lot longer and more painful and just kind of more stressful in general. So I'm just very thankful that she came out beautiful and healthy and she has literally made our lives so much better in so many ways so yeah that is my labor and delivery story if you like this video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below and i will see you in my next video see ya